Hello, my name is Nancy Strickland, and in the next seven minutes, I'm going to tell you about using isolated storage in a Windows 7 phone application. Isolated storage is local storage for your Windows Phone 7 app. All your I.O. operations have to use isolated storage. They can't access the underlying operating system file system, and of course applications can't access each other's data storage. There are two parts to the storage structure. There's a standard file and folder structure here on the right that you can access with APIs like the one for Silverlight and Windows. You can use it to create, delete, and manipulate files and folders. The second part on the left lets you store application settings in a dictionary that's also like Silverlight. Obviously, storage space on a mobile device is going to be limited, but Windows 7 Phone doesn't put a quota size on an app, so that lets developers have maximum flexibility. Of course, as a developer, you have to write your applications so they're conscious of how they use their space and responsible about it. That means not only conserving space, but also being transparent with the user about how much storage is being used. Specifically, make sure that any temporary storage the app creates gets deleted when you're finished with it. And make sure that if the user generates data in the application, there's a way for the user to choose to delete it. Also, you might consider storing data in the cloud with Windows Azure. That gives the user almost unlimited storage. Now, for more information on using cloud storage with Windows Phone 7, there's two other videos in this series. One is on web services and one is on data. And then be transparent about how your app is using storage. Let the user know, for example, how much storage is being used by the data that the user saves. The phone will warn a user if storage gets down to 10%, and then having that information will help the user decide what to delete if that has to be done. Here's an example of using an isolated storage API. The code for writing and reading files is going to look familiar to you because it's like what you've worked with before in other Microsoft technologies. If you've used Silverlight isolated storage, it's pretty much the same. You're going to be using these two I.O. namespaces at the top here, and then the code it shows here is to retrieve existing data. Of course, you can't retrieve it till you've created it, so in the demo that I'm going to do next, you can see the whole process. I'm about to start a new project here in Visual Studio 2010, and it's a Silverlight Windows Phone application. Now, to get set up for this demo, you're going to have to have downloaded some developer tools, and the information about how to do that is in another video in this series that's called Getting Started. So I'm going to assume you've already done that setup, and I'll go ahead and create a new project. First, I'll drag a button and a text box onto my design surface here. I'm going to clear the text out of the text box over here in the Properties window. Now the button is going to store whatever the user writes in the text box. Then I'm going to get a text block and another button, and when the user clicks on the second button, it'll read from that stored file and display the contents in the text block. Now I'm going to double-click the first button and write the code to store the contents of the text box. Now, before I start, I'm going to add the namespaces that I need. System I.O. and System I.O. Isolated Storage. And now down here in the click event, I'm first going to add the code to create a virtual store. There it is. And now using this store, I'm going to create a folder using the create directory method. I'm going to type it in so you can see the IntelliSense. So you can see you can create files and directories, delete files and directories, get lists of file names and directory names, and see or increase your quota. We're going to be creating a directory, and I'll just call it data. Now I'm going to open a stream writer to create and write to a file in this new folder. So I'm instantiating an isolated storage file stream and pointing it to this file that I want to create. Got the file mode create, here's the store, and then that is the argument to the stream writer constructor. And now I'm going to write to the file whatever's in textbox1.txt and then close it. I'm finished with writing, so I'm going to go back to the XAML, double click the other button, and write the code to retrieve what's in the file. So I just pasted it all in at once. You can see that the first thing I do is create the isolated storage file the same way. And then this time I'm going to instantiate a stream reader. So I've got it declared here. 
and then inside my try block I'm instantiating my stream reader pointing it to a new isolated storage file stream pointing towards that file and folder the file mode is open and there's my store and then here I read it out into text block one dot text and then I'm closing my stream reader and here's my catch now I'm going to run it first my emulator will start and then the app will deploy now I can use the emulator like a phone and my mouse pointer like a finger so I'll click in the text box the keyboard pops up I can enter my data click on the button to store it and now that it's stored I can click on this button to retrieve it there it is now I'm going to minimize the emulator but not close it because I want to make changes to my code and it will save me some time if I don't have to restart the emulator now I'm going to change the application to show you how to use settings storage so I'll take the code out of here and paste in just these three lines all you have to do is instantiate a settings object it's a dictionary so you can add anything you want I've got a key and a value here and then save those new settings so when I click button 1 I'll be saving settings and then here in button 2 I'll paste the code to retrieve the settings so again I'll create a settings object declare a string value and in my try block I'm going to use the try get value method to find the value associated with the key color and if I get it then I'll show a message box with it now I'm going to run it again okay I'm not putting anything in the text box this time I'm just storing that setting blue and this should retrieve that setting and there it is as a message box so that was a quick look at isolated storage in a Silverlight phone app I'll put a copy of the code up on my blog so you can download it and as I post new videos I announce it on Twitter Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.